Hello, I'm Frank, and today I'm going to start solving right triangles with our basic free trig functions. And this will be our first lesson on this. So let's just look at what hopefully you've had. Okay, we look at a triangle, and let's let this be angle A. Now, we know a triangle's got three sides, a right triangle. There's two legs and the hypotenuse. So notice this side across from 90 degrees is always the hypotenuse. So a lot of times students can see this as the hypotenuse, but when you turn that triangle, sometimes if they would only go right angle they would say that's the hypotenuse and that'll save them some careless mistakes so we've taken care of the hypotenuse it's across from the right angle now angle A if you shoot straight across that makes sense that's the opposite straight across and then there's one more side the side that's touching A, but well, can't be the hypotenuse because we've already named it. So it's the adjacent. So our three sides of a right triangle are the hypotenuse across from 90 degrees, the opposite straight across from the angle, and the adjacent touching the angle, but not the hypotenuse. Now, our three basic trigonometric ratios are the sine of an angle is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle is the opposite side divided by the adjacent. So with that backdrop, we're going to find numerical values, and I've written this expression up here for you. Some students like it. Socatella, sine opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. This may help you. Okay, now our examples. We're going to work these together. So our first right triangle, we're given an angle of 65, and one side's x and one side's 12. So, first off, we have to recognize which trig function do we use. So look at, let's look at what's given. That's opposite. O. Oh. That's hypotenuse. H. Now, what's opposite over hypotenuse? Look at your definitions. Look at the expression Socatella. OH is your sign. So we would say the sine of 65 degrees. And what's the sign defined to be? It's defined to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Opposite over the hypotenuse. Now, taking out your calculator. I know all of you carry one around. Okay. If you don't have a calculator, just stay with us. We'll make it as clear as I can. There's a key on the calculator called mode, M-O-D-E. It's the second row down, the second column. I'm using a TI-84. Um, when you hit mode, you'll go down to the third line, and it says radian. Well, that's another way to measure angles, but today we're going to go to degree. So go over to the degree symbol darken degree and hit enter. Now, 
So we're going to solve these. So we put a 1 under here, and we cross multiply. We say 1 times x is x, and that's equal to 12. Put the numerical 12 first, and the trigonometric function second. Okay. Now, we will then go to your home screen. So if you go to second, the blue key on this calculator mode, it'll blink to your blinking cursor, and you type in 12 sine. Sine is on the fourth row down, right to the left, or to the right of x to the minus 1. It says sin, S-I-N. Hit the sin key or the sign and type in 65. You can close your parentheses and hit enter. And you get approximately 10.8756, etc. And then it's up to your teacher to tell you how they want you to round it. How about if we go to two decimal places today? So since we're rounding, we will use the approximation symbol of 10, and we will round to 8, 8. And that's it. So I think that's pretty cool that you can find a side just using basic trigonometry. It's certainly better than climbing up there and seeing how tall it is. Okay, so let's go to our second example now. Our second example is right here. Now, on this example, we are going to look at what's given. Well, in this one's what's given is the side touching it, which is the adjacent. And this side straight across from it is the opposite. So which one is adjacent and opposite? Which trigonometric function? Well, if you look at your trigonometric functions, you'll see that the tangent of the angle is defined to be the opposite divided by the adjacent. So the opposite side there is 15. And the adjacent side is your x. So we're going to put a 1 under the left, and we're going to cross multiply. And we get x, put your variable x in front of your trigonometric function of the tangent of 64 degrees. Please put degree symbol there, because without putting a degree symbol there, it's understood to be a radian, and that's not what we want. Is equal to 15. Now, we have to get rid of the trigonometric function from the left, so we divide by the tangent of 64 degrees. And we'll get x is equal to 15 divided by the tangent of 64 degrees. Now, we'll take our calculator, go to your home screen, if you like, second mode, and type in 15 divided by the tangent. Tangent is, again, the third row down, or the fourth row on this calculator. To the right of the COS key, it says T-A-N. Type in 64, close your parentheses, and we get about 7.3159. So how about if we round the two decimal places? 
we get x to be approximately 7.32. And that's our second example. Okay? All right, our third example is going to be something that you're going to see a lot of in your future if you haven't already called special right triangles, but let's assume we don't know that as of yet. So let's look at this one. Hey, now, what do we have? We have the opposite. We have the adjacent. So we're building up practice. This is our first introduction to this. So we look, which one is OA? Well, sort of like the last one. The tangent is the opposite over adjacent. So we state that the tangent of the angle 45 degrees, but in this case, the variable x is straight across. So the tangent is defined to be the opposite, right there, over the adjacent. So we insert the number 1, and then we cross multiply. We have 1x, put the number 6 before the trigonometric function, and now we'll take our calculator. So go to your home screen if you need to, which is second mode and type in 6 tangent of 45. Close your parentheses and you'll get 6. Now, some interesting conclusions can be drawn from that. One is, if this angle is 45 and that's 90, the three angles of a triangle must add up to 180, so this one must be 45. So if you have two angles equal, 45, 45, then the sides must be equal. So side 6 must be the side of the side x, which we concluded by our trick. Our next example. Now, if we turn that triangle, and this is where you really want to be careful. So let's look at the angle. Notice, this is the angle. We go straight across, and we got O for opposite. Now, frequently students will look at this side and say, that's the hypotenuse, not this case. Go to your right angle go straight across, and that's your hypotenuse. Please be careful going straight across from the right angle to get your hypotenuse. Common slip-up. Now, which trig function is opposite and hypotenuse? So, if you look at your definitions, look at your Sokotoa. This is the sine. The sine of 39 degrees is equal to your opposite, x, over your hypotenuse, 14. Put your 1 as your denominator. Cross multiply. And now we take our calculator. 14 times the sine of 39 degrees. So we go to our home screen, second mode. 14 sine. It's on the fourth row, right next to the x to the minus 1 of 39. Close your parentheses, hit enter, and I have...
is approximately 8.81. Our next example. Now, we've turned a triangle again. Be careful. Look at the angle. What's given? The side touching it. That's x. That's the adjacent. And straight across from the 90 degree angle, that's the hypotenuse. So look at your trig functions. Adjacent. Hypotenuse. That's the cosine. So we say the cosine of 59 degrees is equal to the adjacent x right here divided by the hypotenuse. Put your number one under your, is your denominator and cross multiply. X is equal to 14 times the cosine of 59 degrees. Go to your home screen, second mode, 14. Cosine, 59 degrees. Close your parentheses. Enter, 7.210. So we'll call it about 7.21. And that leads us to our last example. This is one you're going to hear a lot of also. It's another special triangle. And we're just going to not use that method. Assume you haven't learned it as of yet, if you have. But it's coming. In this case, you have a 30 degree angle. You're given this side, which is the adjacent. Straight across from the right triangle is the hypotenuse. So which trig function is A over H again? It's the cosine. So it's the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the adjacent side of x over the hypotenuse of 8 inserting a 1 as your denominator cross multiplying we have x is equal to 8 times the cosine of 30 degrees We go to our home screen, second mode, and we type in 8 cosine 30. Close your parentheses, and we have about 6.928, which we'll abbreviate, approximate as 6.93. All right, today we've learned how to find the sides using a right triangle. Our next lesson will be on finding the angle given two sides. Now remember, what kind of angles, triangles are these? Ouch, it's hot. You know why? It's 90 degrees. So today we found how to find trigonometric values of hot or right or 90 degree triangles, okay?
So again, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I've enjoyed teaching you. Stay tuned for the follow-up on this, which will be posted shortly in a few days on Finding Angles. Hope you have a great day.